This is about your people. You scared? Take that down there. Get it down there. I'm just kidding. Don't be so sensitive. <laughs> Show up in a way that no one's else ever showed up in any other store. Does everybody in here get these every single day? Can I ask you a question? Should you guys all be deadly at explaining this? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Are you? Yes or no? No. What the? That's a problem, isn't it? What are you scared of? You want to see how fast people answer and then don't answer? Watch this. Do you guys believe you have the potential to make more money? Yes or no? Yes. Why aren't you? Look how old you guys get. How quiet you get. Your customer sees it in your face. Listen, whatever you're afraid of, they're afraid of. Whatever you're not confident in, they can't be confident in. You scared? Take that down there. Get it down there. I want you to be scared. I want you to understand what to do. Once you learn a process, you'll never be afraid again. There's two types of salespeople in this world. One that lies, and then one that's really good at selling in clothes. Which one do you want to be? You can sleep like a baby at night if you learn how to sell in clothes. The ceramic tent doesn't mean anything. What means something is this. Look, would you agree that there's quantity and quality, sir? Would you agree that some things, right? There's quantity, there's just a whole bunch of them and they're cheap, and then there's quality. Would you agree there's a difference between a Timex and a Rolex? There's two different kinds of window tent, all right? Our goal is the safety of your body, right? Your face, sunspots, cancer, your children. We take that stuff into consideration. Look, when we're looking for window tent for our vehicles, we're not going with the lowest bidder. It's not our goal. We don't Google cheapest tent. What we do is we Google the safest tent and the one that lasts the longest and it's a lifetime. And that's what you've got. I'm sure you expect that, right? Mm -hmm. Good, so we're only doing what yeah. you would want to get on your own. You don't like cheap stuff, do you? No. Neither do we. Why are we talking about cheap? <laughs> <laughs> you know what a car salesman sounds like? Oh, what's going on? You have to put that on your car. That's Listen, I don't have to do it. It's good for you. That's what selling is. It's good for you, sir. Look, what we've learned is that 95% of our customers they wanted this prep package. 95% of them were buying. And you know what it was costing us? $3,700. And our customers were complaining that they wanted it and it was just too much money. So we made a deal across the board to put it on every single vehicle. So we could lower the cost from $3,700 to $1,899. It saved you $1,700. And what's the safety of your family worth? Everything, right? Guys, there's nothing wrong with it. You can sound just like I sound. Some of you guys are taking something out there and you don't believe that you have great news. You know what you think? You think internally that you're ripping someone off. You know what a rip off is? You're not doing a good job. Okay, these people are in here trying to spend their money with this damn store that's worth a century to be open and have all this business and you're scaring them off. You know why you're scaring them off? Because you're not bought in. I'm here right now to get you bought in. What the stats show, the door handle, the guard, increased resale value by $3,000 at the end of ownership. I'm gonna ask you a question right now. This package is a total of $1,899. You don't have to give us the additional $1,200 you're gonna make when you trade it back in. Dude, there is nothing more that'll make you sick than to sit here and spend $60,000, $100,000 of me right now, Mr. Cut to have a damn Walmart cart or one of your kids jump out the back of the car quick in a Texas wind, catch that door, but you got your door guards and done damage your vehicle and you'll say, man, I thought that guy was selling me something I didn't need. You don't think you need it until you need it. Did you say that <laughs> 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 I don't know if he's saying 71 or, how long? Guys, 50 years, guys, watch this. What we've learned, sir, in the last 50 years is that when a customer comes in to trade their vehicle in, getting all the dough for their car means a lot to them. You know what we did? is that we took the fact that when somebody buys a vehicle, they want to keep it looking like new for them and their family until they go to trade it. The only reason why you don't have a life that you want right now is because you're not putting the work in, period. So many of you guys are killing people's dreams out there trying to buy cars and you're making it hard for them. When these people walk in here, right, and they're nervous, they're not nervous about the money. You know what they're afraid of? You're gonna do ass job like the last person that sold them and you're not gonna serve them right I really believe that and you know what I walk around and I look at some of the dumb look on some of y'all's faces y'all are killing these people's dreams out here for what because you don't get it you know why you're not obsessed you know why you're not obsessed with winning and training right now you're not like leg shaking you're like just let me go let me go let me get out there let me get out there you know why because you haven't thought about what your customers are going through you keep thinking about yourself this ain't about you this is about your people you take care of them they'll pay you more than you know what to do with them. show up in a way that no one's else ever showed up in any other store you can do it. And the person that's in charge of making sure that happens is you, which means you got to freaking change. And you don't have to change because we want you to walk around here and act like you're cool. We want you to walk out of here and go take care of people at a different level. Hey, why are you hiding? I'm just kidding. Don't be so sensitive today. <laughs> hey, don't let them be so sensitive today. Hey, answer. you guys want to get paid big money? We need big answers. Does everybody get that? And have them believe and understand the number. Do you get it? If you do, what will happen? Get paid. You guys want to get paid? Dude. Have answers that support getting paid. Because I'm certain, everybody, certainty is the number one thing that a closer has. Listen, you're the nicest guy in the world. No certainty, you're done. Every man and woman should be tested every day. Look, I'm going to tell you something. Do you guys have somebody in your life that pushes you? And by the way, if you do, will you let them push you? See, some people won't let yourself be pushed. Only when you're pushed, when your back's against the wall, will you grow. And my wife, she pushed me 
my back against that wall. And I'd like for you to pin yourself against the wall somehow. It's a mindset shift. You're so talented. And the fact is, is that you want to win. You came here to win, but you're just playing small. And once you realize you're playing small, number one, you're gonna get pissed off. You need that freaking fire and that pissed offness in you to win. I'll explain this to you. When you were a little baby, you would cry for something. You'd throw a fit until you got it. And they told you to knock it off. So you became civilized. And now as you get older, guess what happened? You want something? You know what? You try to see if everybody else is okay with it. Screw everybody. Screw everybody around you. You wanna go kill it right now? That raw instinct you have in your stomach? Nobody's setting the rules on my life. I break rules for a living. I set my own rules. I don't break the law, I break the rules of civilization. I'm not gonna be civilized. You're all millionaires. Question is, will you cash the check? You know how you cash the check? You will walk out that door and you will absolutely not give a what anyone else thinks about you. And the only thing you'll care about is being the best speaker in the world, having the best attitude in the world, literally having conviction and confidence and training every day so you can sharpen your sword, outworking everybody. And also, at the end of the day, it's your mission. Customer comes in, they're buying a car. Nobody's leaving. It's not an option anymore. It's in your blood, it's buy or die. It's not a saying. It's it's not something cool that's a quote. We don't just say it like that, we live by it. It is a code and we can tattoo it on our arm. What are you capable of? I mean, you're capable of some crazy Am I right? Okay, here's what I want to tell you. I don't care what you have right now. What I care about is what are you going to get? I don't care who you are. What I care about is who are you becoming? Would you guys believe that honestly, it's about who you're becoming along the way in life? You know what, if I die right now and I don't die with any money, but I become a great person, I'm okay with that. Would you guys be okay with that? Yep. I, dude, money doesn't mean anything to me. I want to be the fucking best. Dude, you guys sell cars for a living. Be the best. When people get rich, when times shift. You're never going to see time shifts like you're going to see these next four years. We're all going to get slapped in the face. But if you're training, you'll be ready. This market shifts hard, trades drop, books drop, everything changes, good. My competition, I will bury them at that point. They are unskilled, they're running around with heavy wallets, they're average people, no skill, broken mindset now. They've spent too much money, bought too nice of cars and spent more money on houses and all that shit. Now they don't have the skill to keep up with it in a weird market. Now they're gonna make excuses, blame it on everybody and I'm gonna step on their throats and I'm gonna slaughter them. Not a theory teacher. I'm not teaching you like, in theory, guys, if you were to do this, I could see you doing, well, Andy, how many cars did you sell when you sold? <laughs> well, 13, but on my good months, I sold between 16 to 18. <laughs> and guys, no ways. I sold 70 a month every month, and I slaughtered them in a small store.